Hi, well I've been asked to make um, a short video and explain how the CPT and the ETIOFG controller um, is used to produce graphics. So first of all let's talk about this tool CPT. It is free, it is license free and there is no installation so you can't say any fairer than that. So I can assure you this will work on Windows 10 when it comes out. It will also work on XP or 7 or 8 because there's no installation. It's just an exe file. But don't let that put you off, it is incredibly powerful and uh, if anything we should be given credit for the fact that we're able to make this um, platform independent. But anyway, don't need the credit. Um, what I've done is I've just created a ramp here, um, so just to simulate temperature. I've got a page here where I've imported this EasyIO logo using this image through the widget um, icon and I just selected it from there. So what I've done is I've selected this ramp over here. Let me just show you how I did it. Just do it again, drag it in here. Um, out goes to, let's let's put it to a um, label. And when that's done, what we will do is just um, make it slightly bigger. And we'll make the font bigger. You can put any language in here. Let's put 14. Because we're using HTML5 here. Okay, all I would need to do is just save that and deploy that. It's what we call a deploy which just modifies the XML file. Press the preview button and it will ask us to log into the graphics. And while I do that I will explain some of the features in the um, browser um, controls and some of the admin functions. But anyway there you go. It's easy IO. Uh, you'll see this value changing without doing any refreshing. Now of course there's far too many decimal places there so all we would need to do is just go back in there edit the link and if you put your mouse over the top of it it tells you what you can do so if I put dot 2f I will get two decimal places so all I would need to do is that do another deploy and go to preview again I don't need to log in again because the other browser is still open and once we go into there we will have um, a temperature changing with two decimal places and I can add text in front of it or behind it and call it degree centigrade. No issues there. In here we've got admin functions. I can manage the account. I can change passwords. I can decide what users see, what they don't see, what they can do, what they can't do. And I can make different home pages so that maybe an accounts person might just see numbers. And a, an engineer may want to see a, a, a detailed um, chiller control schematic. So um, what we'll do now is just go to the next stage. So now let's add something else to the graphic. We've got the value changing here. Let's now put something like a, uh, I don't know, let's just try something. Just put this in. Uh, let's say we want to have some kind of, um, some kind of thermometer, say, <coughs> just uh, displaying on this page. So this is like a thermometer widget. Just press deploy again. All that does is just modifies the XML file in the controller and uploads it to the SD card. Press preview again. I don't need to log in because I'm already logged in. And you will start to see the video, um, sorry not the video, The you will now see this thermometer coming up and it will move at the sa same time as this value is moving here. I can change the scale of that so it's a little bit more um, convincing. So I've got minimum and max. If I was to make that a minimum of 15 and a max of say 25 we will get a much wider um, scale there and we'll see it moving up and down more um, obviously so let's just go into there you can just close these other two browsers and you will see we have our thermometer widget moving you know much more uh, convincingly and what we've got here is pure HTML5 um, I don't think there are any BMS systems on the market at the moment that have pure HTML5. We call this controller BMS in a box because it can do everything a BMS does in one small box. If you have more than one controller we have peer-to-peer -peer, um, objects where we can broadcast messages. So if you've got an outside air temperature we can broadcast that to 256 controllers. Um, and all those nice features, it's a fully fledged controller and um, I think 2014 we just sold 23,000 controllers and this year it'll be 32,000 and we just won the Control Trends Award for the best controller in the world for the third year running. 
So rest assured, it's quite convincing. Uh, but let me just show you the next part. Now, let's say we wanted to add a second graphic, but we're too lazy. No, I'm not, I don't mean lazy, but we don't really have time to reproduce every graphic that we have. So what we could do is just go into the backups here. I have many backups in here. And I could go to, say, um, I don't know, a boiler plant. This is a project in Wales, I think. Someone sent it to me. There you go, a school project. If I go into CPT in the backup, into app, GR data, and grab the uh, the main, well, let's just grab those three. In fact, let's just grab those four, actually. So those .gr files are actually graphics. And what I'm going to do is paste that into the one that I'm working on. Now, to find that, you would go under CPT, Dick Tools, Development. This can be anywhere on your PC. I just keep it on my D drive. Go into Files, go into Recent, and then we just move down and get to the Sedona app and in here we have graphics and just paste that into here and what you will see in our CPT tool now is a number of additional graphics there's a boiler plant heating extension some some buttons here's some network controls that we can put in the browser and here's a settings page now if I do deploy this and put this in the controller you won't see all of these values because we haven't got the logic in there linked to these um, to these graphics so let me show you what they look like if I just put my mouse over the top of one it's it already has a binding so if I was to go into here and do edit it will give me a fault because it can't find the the path and so that was the path of where this graphic was used in the past so all I do is just say okay and just link it maybe to that ramp and say the out I want it just to go to there and then I just do a deploy again so you know very simple we have so let's um, now open CPT and use the backup and restore tool because I want to show you more complete graphics and I want to show you them from a library that is actually on the SD card so this is where we were um, earlier in the video what I'm going to do now is actually totally restore this to be something else and the way I do that is I go to this backup management tool so we just log into that FTP there and you can see I've got remote. They're all the projects that are on my SD card and my local is on my PC, which are synchronized with the remote. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I already backed the one up, this one called Mike Backup One, so that's already done. What I'm gonna do is bring up um, one called, say, School Boiler Project and let's just do Restore. And when I do that, what will happen is it will get all the files ready it won't do anything to the controller until it's ready to reboot it will then when it is ready it will then reboot the controller and it will install within less than a minute complete new graphics new privileges new passwords new logic you name it whatever you've backed up when you actually created this um, um, control sequence so that cycle is now complete the pro the controller has rebooted if I log in now, we're going to see a completely different um, set of logic. So I've got an optimizer here. I've got some digital logic here, some holiday schedules, all kinds of stuff that's running this particular project. And of course, if I wanted to look at the graphics in my tool, I don't have the graphics. I mean, of course, I have them backed up on my D drive and I could always paste them in like we did earlier. But rather than doing that, what I'm actually going to do this time is actually just delete these from here because they're all packed up, no problems there. Let's just delete these few ones here. This one, and what I can actually do now is download the graphics from the controller, modify them, and then redeploy them back in there. And all I would need to do is just double click on here, hit this download button, and you will see the graphics actually just start to come in. There they are, boiler room, etc and then all I would need to do is modify that and do a full deploy. Now, because it's a backup, it already is deployed, so all I need to do is just go into the browser and you will see a more complete type of graphic coming from this very powerful controller. So what it's gonna ask me to do again is log in. I'm just using the default login. That obviously will be changed for a real project. And you will see the first graphic that will come up is this boiler room. It's totally the opposite to what we had in there before. 
Okay, and then I could just do the same again and I could actually make this um, a chiller plan or whatever I've got backed up from before. So I hope this um, short video will suffice for what is needed and um, I'm pretty sure you will uh, be very happy with, um, with the controller. Full library of dampers and pumps and you know you can bring in your own images, you can bring in GIF files, animated GIFs. Um, so rest assured you know everything is there this is absolutely amazing we're getting rave reviews and of course on the backup side if I go to the backup management tool what I can do here is I have remote and I have local so these are all the projects backed up on my SD card in the controller what I could say is um, mic backup one or AHU and just hit backup when it finishes after about two minutes what it would do is it would ask me if I wanted to then transfer this to my PC so you can have all these backups on your um, on your SD card and on your PC.